Well, thank you, Bishop Matthews, for that overly generous introduction. Uh, it is uh, wonderful to be in Memphis, but it's even better to be in the city. What a special place. I'm very humbled uh, to be with all of you today. Thank you for the warm welcome and the opportunity to share a few words today on a very special day. Out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Those words were first uttered during the March on Washington in 1963. And now they grace a memorial that stands on the edge of the tidal basin in our nation's capital. To this day, I believe those words more than any other capture the spirit of the man for whom that memorial was created. The times in which he lived and the courage and idealism and faith of a truly great American, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. To Bishop Taylor, Bishop Matthews, Bishop Ivory, to Mother Taylor, <laughs> to all of those on this wonderful ministry team, and to all the officials that are gathered here today, it is an honor to be with all of you in this special place on the eve of a great national holiday. And it's also an honor to be here on behalf of the President of the United States at Holy City Church of God on Founders Day. 32 years of ministry and impact in Memphis, Tennessee. You know, it's remarkable to think that Holy City has grown from just three small families gathered in the living room, Bishop Taylor, the home that he'd built with his own two hands. And now a congregation of more than 800 people that fill this beautiful sanctuary. And Bishop Taylor and I were talking, this church has already planted numerous other churches across the area. But as I'm sure Bishop Taylor will remind us, though your members built the structure, unless the Lord builds the house, <laughs> the builders labor in vain. So let's give thanks to God for what he's done through Bishop Taylor, through this great ministry in Memphis and all across Tennessee since 1988. Today, as you mark a great milestone in your church's history, tomorrow the American people will celebrate the life and legacy of a man who literally altered the course of our nation's history. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. was a leading voice in the civil rights movement, and he is rightly remembered as such. But we commemorate his life and legacy because he wasn't simply the leader of a movement. He was a great American leader in the tradition of every great leader in the history of this country. He challenged our nation to live up to our highest ideals, the ideals of our founding. Our founders wrote down that they believed that we were endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights, that all men and women were created equal. He called us to those ideals as a nation. I just visited the Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel, was deeply moved to walk through, and they pointed out to me that in the photographs replicated on the wall, they wanted to make sure that the American flag was in color to know that this movement was about holding up the ideals and values of every American. The birthright of every American. It's why we name streets and bridges and schools in this nation in his honor. And that memorial that Kate just talked about bears his name in our nation's capital. It stands impressively across the tidal basin from the Jefferson Memorial. 
just across the street from the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument, and rightly so. For Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. belongs in that pantheon of American leaders. And Dr. King was one of the heroes of my youth, as you've already heard. But frankly, to be here in Memphis on this occasion, the city where he spent his last days, is deeply humbling to me. He left this world too soon, April 4th, 1968, at the age of 39. On his birthday last Wednesday, he would have turned 91. Earlier today, visiting the National Civil Rights Museum, I was deeply moved to stand in the parking lot and look up at the very balcony where he fell. Standing there, I could not help but think what King David said on the death of Abner. Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a great man. But we're not here today to speak about that terrible day, but about a life of consequence and a life well lived. At the beginning of this service, I, I heard it reflected that if you owe debts, pay debts. If honor, then honor. If respect, then respect. And I'm here to pay a debt of honor and respect to a man who, from walking the dirt roads of the Deep South to speaking to hundreds of thousands on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, touched the hearts of the American people and led the civil rights movement to triumph over Jim Crow. Tomorrow, all across America, millions of our citizens will celebrate his life and his legacy. And we honor him by remembering his work, his courage, his sacrifice. And we honor him by teaching our children and our children's children what Dr. King and all the heroes of the civil rights movement accomplished for this nation. As Kate mentioned, it was 10 years ago, I had the great privilege of traveling to Selma, Alabama and Montgomery for the annual pilgrimage led by Congressman John Lewis. We literally walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge on the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. We heard the stories from those who had been there along with John. And it was an extraordinary experience for me and for my wife and for our three children. We honor, we honor those who served and honor Dr. King by teaching future generations what they did for us. We also honor him by performing acts of service. As Dr. King often said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Amen. Tomorrow, all across the nation, we will mark the 25th anniversary of the MLK Day of Service. And millions of Americans will, as the saying goes, make it a day on, not a day off, by giving back to their communities and coming alongside families in need. And I know Holy City will be there every step of the way. And finally, we honor him by continuing the work he so nobly advanced of forming a more perfect union with liberty and justice for all. As Dr. King said in his letter from the Birmingham jail, and I quote, one day the South will know that when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for what's best in the American dream and for the most sacred values of our Judeo-Christian heritage. As I stand before you today, I want to assure you that under this administration, we've made every effort to open pathways to the American dream for every American, and we have stood strong for the values that we hold dear. Under the leadership of President Donald Trump, we've created more than 8,700 opportunity zones, including many here in Tennessee, bringing new investment and jobs to underserved communities across the nation. And I'm proud to say that today, African-American unemployment is at the lowest level ever recorded.
We've stood for the right of parents to choose where their children go to school. And not long ago, surrounded by university leaders, President Trump made the more than $250 million in annual funding to historically black colleges and universities permanent under federal law. We worked with leaders in both political parties to do justice, to enact criminal justice reform, to make our justice system more fair, to get those caught up in our criminal justice system a second chance. We've defended the religious freedom of every American of every faith. And like Bishop Taylor, and Bishop Matthews, we have stood without apology for the sanctity of human life. We've made great progress as a nation, but there's much work to be done. And I can promise you, this president and this administration will always stand for the values we share and the right of every American to live the American dream, regardless of race or creed or color. So help us, God. Now, finally, history records Dr. King was a civil rights leader. As I said before, he was a truly great American leader. But for my part, I think it's important to remember that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was also a Christian leader. Throughout my life, what has most inspired me about his example is that he was first and foremost a man of faith, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a workman approved, rightly able to handle the word of truth. In Luke chapter 6, our Lord says... The good man brings good things out of the good treasure in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, a man speaks. And one cannot hear or read the words of this great American without hearing the echoes of the gospel and biblical truth. He said, we would not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. He had a dream that one day every valley would be exalted, every hill and mountain would be made low. And as he said in his last speech, right here in Memphis at the headquarters of the Church of God in Christ, the day before he fell, that like Moses on Mount Nebo, he had been to the mountaintop, he had seen the promised land. Those words that echoed into history. He said, I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And so we did. Dr. King could see all that ahead because he had hope. And that hope came from his faith in God. As he said during his famous march in 1963, quote, this is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. He went on to say, with this faith, we will be able to work together, pray together, struggle together, go to jail together, stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. For Dr. King knew where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So in these divided times, let's remember the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Let's remember his leadership of a movement. Let's remember his call to uphold our most cherished ideals. But let's also remember his faith. Dr. King challenged the conscience of a nation to live up to our highest ideals by speaking to our common foundation of faith. He touched the hearts of millions of Americans, and his words continue to inspire through this day. And for all those gathered here and those that might be looking on, let me say it's, it's been my great honor to be with all of you. And as we mark this Founders Day at Holy City, tomorrow as Americans remember the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., I know in my heart of hearts 
that if we rededicate ourselves to the ideals that he advanced, if we strive to open doors of opportunities for every American, and if we more faithfully follow the one that he followed, we'll see our way through these divided times and we'll do our part in our time to form a more perfect union in this one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless America.